So something went wrong around here. Basically the, the signal goes through the coil around here, comes out, it gets amplified, it gets band passed, and then it gets rectified. And around this point, um, basically around here, the voltage should be close to zero, and it's not, and that's giving me a weird signal out. And so um, I've tried adding and removing this chip, and it was a giant pain and didn't really fix anything. And so I think it's time for version two, where everything will be easier to diagnose, hopefully. So the default software didn't want to work for an Arduino Elegoo Uno. Uno. Fortunately, I've, I had an Arduino 
you know, regular Uno on me, and that seemed to work. Now, what you're seeing here is a bunch of noise, um, most likely uh, due to the wall, because I'm plugging in, I'm powering the plus and minus 15 volts through the wall. Um, and I guess we'll see what kind of capacitors I have to use to, to fix this, if it's even possible. Okay, so according to the low pass filter calculator, uh, 330 microfarads should be enough to, uh, when I put it on the input power circuit, should be enough to quiet down the, um, uh, you know, frequency, the 2000 hertz frequency noise. So it turns out that buck converters, the way they work is they just take everything above the current or the voltage that you don't care about and they just chop it off and they do it very cleanly. So they actually work as pretty good voltage regulators as well. So I've got a couple of these that are left over from the, the amateur Steam Deck project and uh, I'm going to try it. All right, everyone's plugged in and color coded. So let's uh, try this out. All right, both LDOs are on with those obnoxious red lights. Nothing's exploding yet. I think we're ready for a test run. Uh, no metal in the area that I can tell. Let's double check. I don't know what's in this bag. Let's move it just in case. And uh, hopefully there's no... Oh, that's metal for sure. Let's do that. And let's just hope there's no metal in the walls. Or minimal metal. I guess it's a little better, but still not very usable. So, now we got to put on electrical engineering hats and figure out where is this going wrong. Um, Fortunately, I built this version to be troubleshooted easily, and I've got these outputs right after each major component, really just after each op amp, and so I can just go down the line and figure out what doesn't look right. Now, so far, uh, if you remember, correct, if you remember, um, this first guy. All he does is he takes one signal and flips it over, and that's what you're seeing here in the pink. All right, um, one of these gets flipped over, and then the second guy is uh, kind of smooths it out. It destroys some of the. It's basically a low-pass filter, so it kind of cuts out some of the corners, and that's what you see there in the yellow. And um, I'm just going to keep using this pink first guy as the trigger for my oscilloscope. So on to the next one. Uh, the next one should just basically look like the yellow. It's just a magnifier tuner. That's what the knob is for. Right there. Okay, well there's one problem. Uh, looks like this guy is getting cut off at the tops. Um, it could be a measurement issue or it could be a board issue. So the first thing I'm going to do is I guess figure out exactly what the difference is here. And it um, looks like 20 volts per tick. So um, that's kind of high. So I'm guessing it's, it's probably this guy, but this guy's too high. So I'm going to use the knob and turn it down a bit. Alright, that's looking much better. Um, we've got a peak to peak of about... 5 to 10 volts, so like something about 8. And um, yeah, it's not one of those things where you want the most amount of power, especially because then your signal starts getting all not sinusoidal. Um, you're actually, the more power you give it, the more you rotate the nucleons, but it is possible to over rotate them. So um, that's what the knob is for, is uh, when you want to fine tune things and get the right amount of rotation going. So uh, yeah, that's stage 3 done. Let's move on to stage four. All right, so stage four is not looking good. Um, that noise you're seeing is basically the leftover from the wall socket after we uh, clean it up a bunch. Um, but yeah, that, that should be 60 bumps per second, 60 hertz noise from the walls. 
And, uh, yeah, <laughs> this is one of the harder ones to troubleshoot because it could be a lot of things. I mean, there's like a few gates that need to open and, and close in order for signal to get through. Um, it, my guess right now is it's the op, op amp um, that might have blown. Um, it could be part of the wiring. I mean, those are really thin wires that go out of the transceiver down through here. Um, it's possible something's disconnected. So, uh, yeah, let's get down to troubleshooting. Um, if I don't think of anything better, I'm probably... Well, first I'm going to double check all the wires again. Uh, make sure I'm not missing, like, a wire. Um, but then I think the next thing to do is probably to replace the op amp. Well, this explains why I'm not getting any signal on the other, on the other side slash uh, op amp number four. And that's because transmit enable, this guy isn't even being triggered for some reason. Uh, hopefully it's not an issue with the Ar Ar Arduino. I guess we'll see. Looks like I just had a bad read relay uh, once I switched it out with another one. There's the new one right there. Uh, now I'm getting a signal back from the coil. So where I'm stuck at right now is that... Um, so this is the polarization circuit. This is what charges and uh, discharges the polarization coil. Um, as you can see, it gets its power through here, through the um, voltage regulators, and from that guy. And so these let me have a lot of amperage from the 11 volts. And what's weird is that if I have it unplugged, I get this output. And if I plug it in, I have this output. Which doesn't exactly make sense to me since, like, how is this guy being plugged in changing the band frequency, bandpass frequency on this guy over here? I mean, it's already gone through the coil. Like, one, that coil's not even attached. Like, the only thing that's connected in the two is, um, you know, the Arduino. Now, it could be, like, one of those weird induction things where the frequency changes. Uh, you know, this guy, uh, depending on if that guy's connected, kind of like uh, metal, the way metal detect detectors work, where you have one coil that's doing one thing, and if it sees uh, anything that can take in some radiation that whatever this thing is doing starts to change. Um, basically, its induction starts to change. And um, I think that's, that's possible. Um, but then I have to figure out why, when it's plugged in, do I get the wrong frequency um, compared to when it's not plugged in. And, uh, yeah, another weird thing is that if I have my probe attached, um, so this is the one that's watching the input uh, chirp, um, but if I have a probe attached around here, or I guess here, at the third guy, no, sorry, yeah, the fourth guy, um, that also seems to bring the frequency back down, so that's kind of weird. I mean, I guess part of the band passes a bunch of capacitors, and maybe having the probe attached is changing the capacitance, but uh, yeah, there's just a lot of weird stuff that it's going to take some digging to to fix, but I'm working on it.